Anterior approach to the elbow joint 20 November 2023. This video has been produced from a book source. We would like to thank the editor Frieden Kirschbaumer. Kirschbaumer, Frieden et al. 2015 Operative Approaches in Orthopedic Surgery and Traumatology. Principal Indications. Fractures of the coronoid process. Osteochondritis dissecans. Ruptures of the distal biceps tendon. Radial nerve compression syndromes. Dislocations. Positioning and incision. The patient is placed in the supine position. The arm is draped to allow free movement, abducted, and placed on an arm table. The elbow is extended and the forearm supinated. An S-shaped incision is begun in the groove between the brachialis and brachioradialis and is continued in a distal direction over the elbow bend. Figure. Exposure of the fascia requires the ligation of several transversely running veins. The lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm is at risk subcutaneously. After exposure of the nerve, the fascia is completely split in a longitudinal direction, and the plane between brachioradialis and brachialis is identified. Figure. Retraction of both muscles brings into view the radial nerve with its division into the superficial and deep branches. The radial recurrent artery with its branches is found in the medial wound region. This vessel should be exposed, ligated, and transected. Now the space between the forearm flexors medially and the forearm extenses laterally can be exposed with the aid of retractors. Figure. Exposure of the joint at maximal supination of the forearm. First the bicipito-radial bursa at the insertion of the biceps tendon on the radial tuberosity is incised. The supinator is now detached as far ulnally as possible and the annular ligament of the radius and the joint capsule are then opened in longitudinal direction. Figure. Exposure of the joint at maximal supination of the forearm. First the bicipito-radial bursa at the insertion of the biceps tendon on the radial tuberosity is incised. The supinator is now detached as far ulnally as possible, and the annular ligament of the radius and the joint capsule are then opened in longitudinal direction. Figure. For better exposure, a Langenbeck retractor may be introduced beneath the brachialis while the elbow is slightly flexed. A small Hohmann elevator is passed under the head of the radius. In this way, the humeral capitulum, the radial portion of the trochlea of the humerus, and the head and neck of the radius are clearly visualized. Figure. For better exposure, a Langenbeck retractor may be introduced beneath the brachialis while the elbow is slightly flexed. A small Hohmann elevator is passed under the head of the radius. In this way, the humeral capitulum, the radial portion of the trochlea of the humerus, and the head and neck of the radius are clearly visualized. Figure. Extension of the approach with transection of brachialis. Transection of brachialis occasionally proves necessary in flexion contractures of the elbow joint. In such cases, the brachial artery and the median nerve have to be identified and medially retracted. The brachialis is exposed at its musculotendinous junction, and a curved clamp is passed beneath it from the lateral side. A V-shaped incision is made in the tendinous part, and the tendon is transected. Figure. Extension of the approach with transection of brachialis. Transection of brachialis occasionally proves necessary in flexion contractures of the elbow joint. In such cases, the brachial artery and the median nerve have to be identified and medially retracted. The brachialis is exposed at its musculotendinous junction, and a curved clamp is passed beneath it from the lateral side. A V-shaped incision is made in the tendinous part, and the tendon is transected. Figure. The subjacent joint capsule can now be incised transversely. In this way, a complete extension of the elbow can usually be obtained. Now the trochlea of the humerus as well as the coronoid process are well exposed. Figure. The subjacent joint capsule can now be incised transversely. In this way, a complete extension of the elbow can usually be obtained. Now the trochlea of the humerus as well as the coronoid process are well exposed. Figure. Thanks for watching.
Subscribe Orthopedics Trauma in YouTube.